You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson. Episode 31, The Quick Getaway. Today was Labor Day. Duncan, my trusted guide dog, and I were with the usual crowds of people awaiting the appearance of the Labor Day Parade. We had selected an ideal location in the shade of a wise old maple tree. The reviewing stand was here too, complete with all the city's dignitaries and parade judges. If such revered company chose this spot, then this was the creme de la creme. We came early for this important celebration, carrying a folding chair in my right hand and Duncan's harness in the other. Dunk seemed pleased to be out and about until he realized that we had company. A great deal of company. I could feel his head swiveling from one side to the other, taking everything in. What are all these people doing here? he wondered as we pressed forward. There were people with goodies, others with noisemakers, and still more doing everything on bicycles. There were others who had their pets with them, and the instant these pets spotted Duncan, they felt a great need to protest. Who could blame them? Duncan was a huge black Labrador, far larger than the usual lab, but he was blessed with a loving nature, gentle manner, and acute intelligence. He rarely barked and was happiest when he was helping me, his crazy cat. It was easy to understand why this situation worried him so much. I don't know what this is, but I don't think Cat should be here. She could get lost or crushed in all of these people, we really should go home. Of course, Duncan was a worrywart, and this cat wasn't going to pay any attention to Duncan's concerns. I love parades, and this was going to be a good one. I like the bands and the horses best. You can keep all the convertibles with beauty queens and politicians. Show me the floats or trumpets. And that's what I wanted to see. I unfolded my chair and prepared to be entertained. Duncan lay at my feet and worried some more. It was almost an hour before the first of the parade made its appearance. Of course we had to cheer when our member of parliament drove by. Traditions are almost inexplicable when you stop to think about it. You see, Dunk. He doesn't play an instrument, and he is useless when it comes to twirling a baton, but we cheer for him to make him feel good. I'd feel a lot better if we just packed our bags and packed off home. We could have lunch. It's almost lunchtime. I couldn't help but cheer for the majorettes as they passed in front of us. There was one very dexterous little girl who sent her baton skyward. Next stop the moon, I thought. Duncan was watching too with concern etched on every muscle of his eyes as they tracked the baton as it hurled itself up, up, up and away. But finally, it began its descent and Dunk pushed himself in front of me. It didn't come even close to me, but it was only a little stick. Yet Dunk's sign of relief was audible. I had to feel bad for the little girl. Imagine dropping the baton right in front of the reviewing stand. It was a wonderful toss anyway. We both relaxed as a drum corps marched by in full regalia and no one out of step. Those hats must be really hot, I thought, as I imagined their weight, as well as warmth on such a sweltering day as this. Duncan watched intrigued as the drummers marched on the spot. You could tell that this was most perplexing from his point of view. They aren't moving an inch. Everything's going bananas, he surmised. 
Next came the brave firemen in their shining red truck. Oh, look, Duncan. It's glowing like a Christmas tree. Someone must have taken it to the car wash this morning and had it waxed as well. These words had no sooner left my mouth when the truck's sirens wailed in agreement. Duncan really could not be blamed when he began to wonder what would happen next. This next took the form of a mischievous little girl with pink shorts and a huge red lollipop. She was sitting some distance from us until she spotted long-suffering Duncan. Doggy, doggy, she proclaimed as she ran towards Duncan with her lollipop extended. Throwing her arms around him, she was about half his size, yet Duncan was awestruck with bewilderment. This pint-sized Amazon did not answer to the name Prudence. But her mother was a hopeful sort. She kept calling out, Prudence, get away from that dog. He could eat you for lunch. Yes, and still want dessert, I thought, as Duncan valiantly did his best to avoid the sucker assault. Finally, Mummy Dearest got her Prudence safe and sound back to their seats. But quite honestly, Duncan was wondering why people have kids at all. Why don't they just love a dog? Even a cat might be better. He gazed down at his once shining coat, now sticky with lollipop slobber. He hoped that when they got home, Cat would give him another brushing. Things began to settle down. More convertibles conveying the usual people too lazy to walk. Well, if that is the worst of it, I guess we are going to be okay. Duncan was beginning to feel that he could see the light at the end of the tunnel. He didn't get into the least upset when the horses and ponies walked by. They didn't carry lethal lollipops or throw sticks at innocent bystanders. There were far too many people for such a small area, but they were staying still. He could keep his cat safe in this strange predicament. Apparently, my dunk was premature in this evaluation of our situation, because all of a sudden, he leapt up and began to pull me to my feet. I honestly did not understand what was inspiring this strange behavior. Normally, Duncan is calm, placid, and a really good guide, and now he was frantic, pulling and pushing me in all directions at once. Someone beside me started to laugh. I bet he can hear the bagpipes. The radio says they just turned down Merritt Street. I couldn't hear them, but I don't have Dunk's ears. Okay, Dunk. We'll go, but I have to take the chair. I folded it, and no sooner was my hand on the harness than Dunk gave a demonstration of lightning speed. He decided that we would avoid the crowds by going cross-country and through the fields. To this day, I have no idea what route he took. I can only say that the chair was a blasted nuisance as it bruised my hips and then my ankles in turn. Duncan was determined to get us home, and it wasn't long before we stood at our door. He stopped and looked beseechingly at me. Can we go in now? I reached for the house key, and we were home. Duncan stood composed while I unbuckled his harness. Whoever named you Duncan didn't know your opinion of bagpipes. You couldn't possibly be Scottish. I gave my fearless knight a huge hug. Never mind, big boy. There aren't any more parades until the Great Parade at the end of the month. Not another parade. I hope it rains, Duncan sighed as he gave Cat a loving lick on her cheek. Oh, please, let it rain.